Now, it's been said that I urged my husband to nominate her as our first female Secretary of State. Unlike much that's said, this story is true. <laughs> and I was thrilled when he agreed. When dictators dragged their feet or ambassadors filibustered, Madeline never hesitated to speak up. And just in case they didn't get the message, she would put on a snail pin to signal her impatience. A dozen times a day, she would ask her team, what's next? turning her boundless energy and intellect to yet another crucial global challenge. She was irrepressible, wickedly funny, very stylish, and always ready for a laugh. She brought the same energy to her friendships as she did to her diplomacy. So the angels better be wearing their best pins and putting on their dancing shoes. Because if, as Madeline believed, there's a special place in hell for women who don't support other women, they haven't seen anyone like her yet. Who's your publisher? Hillary Clinton remembering another trailblazing Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who was laid to rest yesterday, honored by world leaders as a force for good. President Biden saying she could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the toughest dictators. We're going to have much more from the funeral of the late Secretary of State. It was truly amazing, and Hillary Clinton was truly amazing. Plus, a new push to shore up Ukraine now and in the months to come as President Biden prepares to ask Congress for a new aid package, and it goes beyond just military support. And new video from a Ukrainian military commander that uh, who was holed up inside that steel plant in Mariupol, pleading with the international community to, quote, extract everyone as soon as possible. Also, new developments adding to fears the war could expand beyond Ukraine. And millions of Ukrainians have fled to safety by train. Later this morning, we'll talk to the head of Ukraine's rail system about the workers who continue to put their lives in jeopardy in service of their country and their people. Good morning and welcome to Morning Joe. It is Thursday, April 28th. A lot to get to. But Joe and Willie, the funeral for Madeleine Albright was so inspiring, it was so touching, it was so beautiful. She was so incredible. She really was. And Willie, here you have an immigrant whose family was chased out of her country in Europe first by Hitler, then by Stalin, a woman who came to America and became just a, a, a clear voice for freedom, uh, for liberty, uh, for, for, for American exceptionalism at home and across the globe, uh, for, for, for uh, to use that American power for the same reason Dr. Brzezinski uh, and, and her talked about using American power all the time, uh, for good, uh, for liberty, for freedom, and for the very things that the people of Ukraine are fighting for right now. A timely, timely message to the people of Ukraine and the world, and the angels better be wearing their best pins. <laughs> uh, Willie, certainly yesterday, Washington did its best to say goodbye to an immigrant, a trailblazer, an American hero. Yeah, the embodiment of the American dream sailed with her mother past the Statue of Liberty into Ellis Island, fleeing first the Nazis and later, as you said, uh, Stalin and communism. And Mika, you were in the room. You were at the National Cathedral uh, yesterday. Some stirring speeches, of course, by those bold-faced names, but also by her daughters. I thought those speeches were incredibly moving. And then I know you got a chance to speak uh, later at an event at the Institute for Peace, where there's a hall named for Madeleine Albright, who, as I say, spent her life uh, living out the dream that she and her mother had to find freedom and to ensure it for other people around the world.
It was truly an amazing day. By, by the end of this event at the Institute for Peace, we were all exhausted, but in a really good way, where you felt so inspired by Madeline's legacy. At the Institute of Peace and at the funeral, you had leaders and foreign ministers from all around the world, from Georgia, from Kosovo, from Belarus, and of course, the Czech Republic. Uh, Madeleine Albright, of course, a refugee refugee from Czechoslovakia. Um, and uh, it was uh, it was one of those events where you really felt caught up in the moment. And Joe, I'll tell you, I I um, spoke after Stephen Hadley um, and was sweating. I, w I felt so I felt like, oh, boy, I was told to express personal stories about Madeleine Albright and had this very last minute of panic that perhaps Mine were too personal and random compared to the unbelievable speakers they had in this unbelievable hall named after Madeleine Corbell Albright, who had really changed the world in so many ways, so much so that people traveled from literally around the world to get there to honor her. Yeah, well, of course, and they did honor their world leaders, honored her, said wonderful uh, things about the difference she made. Uh, and uh, people like Stephen Hadley uh, got up and, and, and spoke eloquently about uh, the difference she made uh, in U.S. policy and, and international policy. But your job, Mika, was, was not that, not for a new 12-point <laughs> plan for the next Marshall Plan. Uh, I think they wanted to hear the stories you told, the stories about how when you all came to Washington, D.C., Madeleine Albright told your father, who he had hired, uh, hey, Hey, you know what? You sit down at the desk. You do the work. I'm going to find a place for your family to live. And not only did she go out and find the farmhouse uh, that you grew up in your entire life, uh, she uh, she told your father to sit down and and keep working. That that your mother uh, needed to be thanked for all she was doing. She was going to go out and find her a horse. And yes. if that wasn't enough, she then took active uh, active uh, uh, interest and where your brothers were going to college. And mm -hmm. when Ian got admitted to Stanford, she said, well, Stanford's good, Willie. She goes, Stanford's pretty good school, but that's not where you're going. You're going to go to <laughs> Williams. So she was in, in, in charge of that as well. And of course, would call Mika uh, on her father's birthday every morning because the Brzezinski women are so absolutely terrible at remembering birthdays. So Madeleine Albright would remember birthdays for them. She would. Yeah, Mika, I know you had that personal touch with her. I think most of the world saw uh, what a tough diplomat she was and how she just got things done. But you saw so much of her humanity, and we'd see it every time she came on the set and, and spoke with us in commercial breaks um, and then sort of turned it on when it came to policy. But um, you had such a rare glimpse, and there's a shot of your father over her left shoulder mm -hmm. there, a rare glimpse over the years at her humanity, at her personal touch. Yeah, no, she loved us very much. I'm not sure why. Uh, put up with us, and uh, we're we're also blessed to have known her. She gave us that horse, by the way. We didn't have a barn, so we tied it to a tree in McLean, Virginia. Oh. You're getting a picture here, right? It was very <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eastern European. <laughs> it was very yeah. different, but. Um, but we, we loved her so much, and she helped us so much, and she had an impact on every phase of our development as uh, me and my brothers grew up. So more later, uh, but we remembered Madeleine Albright, and it was so worth it.